Hey, well, welcome to 996 and how for the uninitiated, this is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes and what a road trip, what a great, great, what a great way to end that road trip, an amazing game against the Chicago Blackhawks who used to give Coyotes fans nightmares, they were the boogeyman for so many years and man what a different feeling this time facing the Blackhawks in their own barn I mean down to nothing down 3-1 I wasn't nervous at all I knew the Coyotes would write their ship and get back into the game and that, that's exactly what happened I mean sure they went down early to nothing not a great start but uh, they shorted up um, the Hawks basically disappeared after the first five or seven minutes of the game. Even their third goal um, was a bit just right off the face off, a fluke deflection that, you know, you can't really blame Kemper or the Coyotes for that. You know, it's a, lo it's a lost draw that ends in a deflected point shot. But, I mean, the Hawks had no answers for the Coyotes after the first five minutes. And the Coyotes just kept coming and coming, just relentless. So many shots. They had 44 shots at the end of regulation. It was just a continuation from that Pittsburgh game where they played extremely well, probably deserved a better fate than a regulation 2 nothing loss. Uh, it's funny because they probably deserved to win that Pittsburgh game and lose that Philadelphia game, which they had no business winning that Philadelphia game. But top teams find a way to win, and the Cowboys have played two Great, amazing games back-to-back. -back. They had a great game in Columbus. A bit of a, of a rough one in Philly, but they still managed to win that game. They go three wins, one loss in this four-game road trip. And, uh, yeah, this Chicago game was, was really a fun game to watch. So much speed. The Cowdies had a lot of offensive time, which you don't really see much of. I mean, the Hawks... Couldn't really defend well against the Coyotes, and Coyotes were just taking advantage, just cycling the puck, working their D hard, and uh, relying on Robin Leonard a lot, who made unbelievable saves. I mean, Robin Leonard was great, and he mimicked the performance that Tristan Jari had for the Pittsburgh Penguins on Friday night, who he was a wall as well, and the Coyotes could not solve Jari, and they lost that game, but... Here, I mean, the Cowboys had so many shots that uh, Leonard couldn't save them all. He, he let in three goals. And then in the shootout, just an amazing goal by Connor Garland. Just motionless, gliding to the goalie and roosts it with so much ease into the empty corner. I mean, Connor Garland, he scored his 12th goal tonight as well with the shootout goal. Just continues to just produce no matter where you put him. He had an off game in Columbus. Uh, he scored in Philadelphia. A huge goal to put up to put the Coyotes up. I think it was 2-0 in that game. Uh, one of the biggest goals of the year. Because the Coyotes won that game in Philadelphia. And they were first place in the Pacific. But unfortunately they lost Friday and Edmonton won. And now tonight... Whether Edmonton wins, uh, the Coyotes could see themselves staying at first place. But uh, with this win against Chicago, they're back in first. Depends on if Edmonton Oilers lose or not tonight. But yeah, Connor Garland, 12 goals in the season already. We're 32 games into the season. So there's no doubt in my mind that Connor Garland won't get 20 goals. It'll be our first 20 goal score in two seasons. No one got 20 goals last season. And Connor Garland, who got moved to the fourth line with Grabner and Richardson due to the extremely amazing play by Christian Fisher this road trip. I mean, Fisher really had a coming out party this road trip in Columbus and continued that great forechecking speed into Philly and Pittsburgh and into Chicago. He had a great game. He scored a goal, the first goal, hits off his skate because he drove to the net. And, uh, yeah, Fisher got rewarded playing with Schmaltz and Dvorak. Garland gets pushed down to Richardson and Grabner. Still scores an amazing goal. A nice beauty wrister from the slot. I mean, this guy, man, ever since he came to the league about a year ago almost, he came into the league last December. Um, just consistently goal scoring. Uh, he has the most goals scored by a Coyote since his call-up. And, uh... He's just going to continue to prove me wrong. I always doubt him. I always wait for him to fall off the map. And when there's a game or two where it looks like he might, 
Uh, he has a game like this, like he had against Chicago. So great to see Garland produce. Keller's looking very confident. He's picking up points. Kessel's looking confident too. Had a great game in Philly and in Pittsburgh both and Chicago. I, th- I feel like Kessel and Keller are having a great uh, string of games here. Dvorak, Schmaltz looking good. Didn't like their game in Columbus, but um, I guess they watched my video and <laughs> they didn't. But uh, they had a great game again in Pittsburgh and in Chicago. Defensively, I feel like OEL's kind of like... You know, rough couple games here and there. Not too many blatant mistakes. I feel like that first goal uh, was caused because OEL let his man go around him and uh, pass it to Taves. Not really sure. I forget who that was. But OEL shouldn't have let him get around him so easily. Osterley had a great game against Chicago. He's He always shows up when he plays his former team. Hopefully he can continue that play. I saw him on the power play too, which was strange. I uh, wonder if that's going to be permanent or OEL, you know, was kind of nursing a minor injury maybe and didn't want um, talking, maybe didn't want to throw him out on the power play. but Or maybe he was playing too much because Goligoski had a cut on his hand and he missed a couple minutes in the second period. So maybe OEL was overworked. So they gave that power play opportunity time to Osterley. But Osterley had a great chance on one of those power plays, a nice slapper. But uh, Robert Leonard saved it. But, uh, yeah, man, what a great road trip. And I think it's finally over that terrible, rough schedule of November and the first week of December. It's over. A lot of breathing room, a lot of practice time. Hopefully the Coyotes could replicate these games like they had against Pittsburgh and Chicago. Just a more offensively minded, a lot of great opportunities. Just maybe execute a bit more. Uh, which they did in Chicago, and um, get it rolling. They're a team that's learning and changing things. This this team isn't stagnant, which I love. Talkit is always trying new line matchups. Like I said today, he tried Dvorak, Schmaltz, and Fisher. So even though the team's, you know, first or second place in the division and winning games, he's still trying new things, testing things out. And that's great to see. Nick Jalmerson should be coming back in a couple weeks. He's skating. Um, His scheduled return was sometime in January. We'll see if he manages to come back late December. But uh, once Hammer's back and once a penalty kill gets going, this power play is picking up goals now. This power play is pretty good. I think they're about 12th in the league. So a lot of good things surrounding the Coyotes. You got Calgary Tuesday and then Chicago again Thursday. Both at home, I believe. Yeah, they're both at home. So they got to keep it rolling, man. They're top dogs in the Pacific, and uh, they got to keep it going. They're playing great hockey. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support.